Hi guys. So I've been really rubbish on Twitter lately and I wanted to give something back to apologise and I asked you all what you wanted and it was a resounding yes for another awkward video. So here I am in all my awkward glory. Um, so I thought I'd film a video um, and I was trying to think what to do it about. And I thought, you know what, 2020 has been a really rubbish year, but it's got to be the year for the most amazing books that I've read. And I wanted to film a video sharing with you some of my favourites from within the writing community on Twitter. And I tried to narrow it down. I was going to do my top 10, but I just, there were way too many that I liked. So we've, we've narrowed it down to top 20. And I just want to say, if I don't mention your book, it doesn't mean that I didn't absolutely love it. It's just because if I go more than 20, I'm going to be here for a couple of days. So it's in no particular order. So don't think that because your book is, you know, towards the end of my list, I liked it any less than the ones at the top. So without further ado, let's start talking about books. If you're a part of the writing community, then you will probably have heard of this book. And Oh my god, you will not be disappointed if you read this. So it's a vampire supernatural book and it's, there's a twist, let's just say there's a twist. When you hit 50% through the book, be prepared for your jaw to drop. Um, I don't want to give too much away, I'm not, you know, I'm not a natural reviewer. So what I'm saying is if you're looking for a supernatural story with a nice twist, a little bit of romance in, um, there's really strong female characters and it's just really empowering I think and it's it's a new twist on the whole supernatural genre. So go and check that one out. This book is really big in the uh, writing community and rightly so and also happen to know that the author is a very very lovely person. So the next one is Stray Witch by Eva, Al Eva Alton. I can't believe I've messed that up. So I love, 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 love Eva's writing. It is so nice to read and it makes, you read it and you think, wow, writing a book looks easy. And that's when you know that you're reading a good book by a good writer. It's another supernatural genre. You've got vampires and you've got witches. Um, there's another slow burning romance going on. Stray Witch is the, I say the first one in the series, but you've also got the Vampire's Assistance, which sort of comes before it, but it's more of like a little, um, a little story. So I'd, I'd probably start with Stray Witch if I were you, to give you a bit of a background, and then you can um, read the Vampire's Assistant. That's the way I did it, and um, I think it's a really good way of getting to know the story. But these books are amazing. Everything you could want in a supernatural, you've got a lot of different characters and personality traits and you what Eva's really good at the relationships and seeing how all these different characters mix and bounce off of each other. So it's a definite read if you like the supernatural genre and you fancy some witches and vampires in your life. My next book is Love on the Rocks by Elsie MacArthur. Now as I'm filming this, Elsie has two books out, plus a little Christmas book. Um, Love on the Rocks is probably my favourite, but it's a very, very close call between that and Backup Plan. She's a brilliant romance writer, and it whisks you away to Scotland, and it's just, you're going to put that book down with a smile on your face and ready to book a plane ticket to Scotland. <laughs> Trust me. My next choice is Atonement by J.L. Rothstein. So this book is um, urban fantasy and it's considering sort of heaven and hell, quite focused on family as well. There's quite an element to that. There's a lot of action. It's a really, really brilliant read if you're into sort of supernatural elements and you want that aspect of the good versus evil. Um, full of excitement, full of mystery, and I am really looking forward to the next one in the series. So my next option is Simone Le Frey and the Chocolatier's Ball by S.P. O'Farrell. It's quite a mouthful. Um, now technically this is a children's book, but I challenge any adult to pick this book up and not enjoy it. So Simone is a spy and there's some drama going on. In, um, in Paris around the Chocolatier's Ball and she has to figure things out. I don't want to say too much because I'm always so scared I'm going to say the wrong thing and give away the plot. So I would say if you enjoy a spa, 
bar. If you enjoy a spy story and you like chocolate, then definitely pick up this book. And if there's a child in your life that you can read this book to, definitely, because it's much more fun than most children's books that you have to read. I'm a huge Jane Austen fan and I absolutely love Pride and Prejudice. It's probably one of my favorite classics and romances. So when I came across some Pride and Prejudice stories, sort of spins on them, I was a little bit dubious to be honest, but I thought, you know what, I'm gonna give it a go. And oh my God, I'm so glad I did. So my first option is Death Takes a Holiday at Pembley by Kelly Miller. Now Kelly has a few different um, Pride and Prejudice stories out and I've read a couple of them and I can promise you that they are so good. I particularly like this one because it was step on from Pride and Prejudice. So you got to see how the characters lives then progressed and it's nice to see that Kelly captured the characters so well. So you really felt like you were reading the next book on and you got to see how their relationship evolved and for me that was really really fun to read and yeah I just think it's a really great read especially if you love Pride and Prejudice it, it does it justice. Next on my list of books is Cleaning the Slate by Andrea Warrillow. Here we go. So this is a, at the moment there's three books out in the series. I believe Andrew has plans for at least one more. Um, it's a really nice story but with quite a depth to it. So the main character has lost her husband and she then falls in love again and they create a new lives for themselves and they open up their own um, sanctuary and it's, it's quite idyllic but there's a little bit of drama going on and there's romance and there's sort of drama with um, friends and family. So it's a really nice read. Uh, for me in particular, I love horses and I have ridden for most of my life. So the element of the horses in it really, really appealed to me. I think any animal lover will love this book and it's just a real feel good. My next book is Quicksilver and Brimstone by Elizabeth Eckstone. So I love this book. Um, it's, it's classed as for teens and young adults. But I think kids would love it. Um, there's, a, there's a little bit of a scene that might scare some children, so perhaps read it before giving it to your children. Um, my cousin, he's only five at the moment, but I know that this is a book he will love, and I'm just waiting for him to be old enough to read it. So for me, it was the fantasy world that the author created was so magical, and it was just so well thought through. It was brilliant. And the plot, I just, I couldn't quite see where the plot was going to go. And that's quite fun because I think quite often you pick up a book and in the within the first few pages, you, you kind of have a good idea how it's going to end and how it's going to progress. But this book really it kept, it kept me on my toes. It kept me guessing what was going to happen. And for me, that was brilliant. And I can only imagine as a child how amazing that story would be. Um... I just think it was really, really well written. The world was brilliantly created and it really appealed to my imagination. And I just think anyone that picks it up will adore it. My next book on my list is a um, fairy tale retelling. So it's The Rose and Fawn by Catherine MacDonald. Now, I know all the fairy tales, but I was never sort of the kind of child that was obsessed with them. So when I picked up this book, I was like, well, I'm not really sure how I feel about this. Um, but wow, did it did it hook me from the first few pages? It was just, it was magical. And it was, it had that fairy tale feeling about it. And I didn't want it to stop. I really didn't. So it's a Beauty and the Beast retelling, but a bit of a modern retelling. There's not quite that, um, oh, I don't know. Um, this fairy tale retelling will appeal to quite a lot of people because the Beauty and the Beast had a few flaws, shall we say? Um, but in this version, it's not the beast that's trapping Beauty slash Rose there. Um, so I think that's really quite appealing and it takes away that slightly odd element to the story. So if you're a fan of fairy tales, or even if not, give it a go. My next book is The Hidden Scar by Sabrina. I'm not going to attempt to pronounce her surname because I'm probably going to butcher it and it's not going to be very nice. Anyway, so this book is, I really enjoyed it. It's really 
got quite an emotional depth to it and it it sort of explores how death can have an impact on people in future parts of their life um so that combined with the romance and there was like a real sexy edge to the book i think it was um it was a really good read and i really enjoyed it and if you're looking for something that will get you thinking and get you feeling um then i definitely recommend it i definitely had to reach for a tissue a couple of times my next book is the marked princess by ep stavs now this is a young adult um, but again I think it's you don't really have to be into the young adult genre to really enjoy this book. So it's a combination of a magical princess, a forbidden love and a mystical adventure. Again I don't want to say too much to give the plot away but it's really enjoyable. It's nice to see like a, a modern take on like a mystical magical adventure but with a really strong female lead. Um, and I think we've seen a lot of that in these indie books where there's a lot of really strong female characters and it's brilliant to see, brilliant to read and brilliant to think that younger generations are going to be reading this book and seeing how strong female characters are. Another thing that I really liked about this book was that the chapters were quite short. So when a book's like that, I'm like, oh, I'll just one more chapter and then I'll put it down. And then you get to the end of the chapter and you're like, well, another one will only take me a few minutes. I'll just do one more. And then before you know it, you finish the book. So short chapters. Anyone that knows me, and I don't think you have to be following me for very long on Twitter to know that I'm a big fan of a nice, sweet romance. Um, so this book was quite outside of my comfort zone. It's Curl Town by S.D. Reed, and it's a British horror. I know. So I had to read it in daylight hours, <laughs> but it was so, so good. I really enjoyed it. It really captured my imagination. And I like the fact that the book concentrated on all the residents of the town. So you were, you were changing characters quite often, but the characters each were really well thought out with their own backgrounds and perfectly molded to play a different role in the town and it was just a brilliant read it was really well thought out and it was i really liked it, it was british um because as a sort of a british reader i find a lot of the books i'm reading are american which are brilliant but you really miss out on that british humor and the, the use of language in this book was brilliant because the <laughs> The language used really fitted the horror element. I mean, every now and then they'd use a word that would really sort of jar you and remind you that you were reading something quite brutal and scary. And I just found that not only were the words, you know, used to create this story, but they were also used to create these feelings by the types of words used. I, I'm really not explaining this very well, am I? <laughs> but yeah, I just think this was a really brilliantly well-written horror um, and I'm looking forward to seeing what else SD Reed can write. I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I know anything about poetry because my knowledge is severely limited. But what I know is when I pick up a poetry book and it makes me feel things, I really enjoy the flow of the writing, then I know it must be good. So this one, Strange Colours by David Middleham. Um, I picked up a while ago and finally got around to reading it and as soon as I read the first page I was just wow it was so beautifully written and the words were just they flowed so well and as I read each line it really got me thinking and feeling and I just wow to someone that doesn't know anything about poetry I knew that that was good so if you're looking for a poetry book then I would highly recommend this The next book is probably, I think it was maybe the second book that I read in the writing community. So it's Tell Me Your Sweet Lies by Gio and Ken Gregory. Now the story itself is really, really good. It's, um, there's lots of twists, tw turns, and there's a little bit of romance going on. But for me, this story was more than just the book. Um, it was also the story behind the authors. So Ken and Gio were married, and unfortunately Gio passed away. But Ken wanted to continue with um, letting people read Geo's work. So he's gone ahead and published it. And all proceeds are going to Thrombosis UK in memory of Geo. And I just think it's such a lovely story. And honestly, when you read this book, you will see how talented Geo is. And you will, you'll be raving about it like I am, honestly. 
this next book is by an author that I've read a number of their books um, and I've also had the pleasure of beta reading one of their recent stories which is really good and I'm looking forward to sharing that with you once it's out. So it is the, this book is The Papers of Matthew Locke by John Wheatley and it's a really, really interesting story. Um, there's romance, there's a lot of mystery in it as two of the characters try to form a relationship but there's quite a lot of complications for them so you don't really know which way it's going to go and it leaves you guessing right to the end and it's really just a brilliant, brilliant read. Actually, it's got quite a lot of history in it so if you're also a fan of history then definitely recommend this one. My next book is a rather special one and I'm sure many of you like me have probably never read anything quite like it. So it is Broken Things by A.L. Garcia and it's basically an account of the abuse that the author suffered as a child. Now it's, it's a tough read and it's really emotional to know that a child suffered like this. But wow, what a story and what a strong woman to have gone through all of that, to have created the life that she now has and to be able to speak out and to try and help others. A huge respect, huge, huge respect. And I really do think that you should pick this book up. This next book is Life Inspired and it is No Longer Me by Ali Parks. Now this again was another difficult read um, in which the character discovers that she has a brain tumour and we follow her on her journey as she goes through treatment and life after. It's moving, it's really moving and knowing that it's life inspired makes it really difficult to read but also makes you think about how lucky you are and how there are people out there going through this and wow how strong are some people and i have huge respect for ali for going through it and coming out the other side and telling her story amazing so this next one there's two parts there's a part one and a part two so it is the frustrations of being deaf by dave blackwell so i came across this when it was recommended by another author on twitter and it's it's a story really about dave's own experiences and to raise awareness of how much lack of deaf awareness there is out there. So I was even more intrigued when I learned that the author actually lives in the same county as me. So I thought, well, okay, this is going to be a really good read because I've never considered how much deaf awareness there is out there. And I'd like to think that people are quite understanding and considerate. But having read it and knowing that they're not, and knowing that it's people who live in the same area as me was quite astounding. So it's, it's really funny and it, it shouldn't be funny but it really is um, and you're almost laughing at Dave's expense because it's stuff that he's experienced and the sh pure stupidity of other people. I mean there are some brilliant laugh out loud moments but at the same time you'll be thinking wow are there really people like that out there? So it's a bit you really need to read for yourself and um, it's one that I think will help raise awareness and it will make you think about how considerate you are of others. The next book is by an author that I've read a few by, um, but this particular one did make me laugh quite a lot. So it's Crayons and Chaos by Hayley Walsh. Now, I think if you're a parent, you will find this book hilarious. Um, I don't have kids, but I have a lot of young people in my family and I could relate to quite a lot of it. And it follows the story of Natalie as she leaves her marriage and meets a new man who, and in basically inherits two stepchildren and it's how she adapts to life her new stepchildren and it's it's really funny there's a lot of sarcastic humor and that really really appeals to me so i think for quite a lot of people it would be quite relatable and um, as i said even if you don't have kids even if you know what kids are like i think you will um you'll find yourself laughing and being able to picture people being in quite a similar situation so definitely a read i would recommend the final book that is on my list, I'm actually only 13% of the way through, but I already know it's going to be amazing and it's so well written. So it is The Borrowed Boy by Deborah Clay. And it's such a good concept for a story. And it's, as I say, it's written so well. I picked it up and I just thought I'd have five minutes reading before bed last night and I could not put it down. It was so, so good. 
and it just kept me hooked and it's another book that's the cha chapters are relatively short and when I have chapters like that it's always like oh just just one more just see what happens and you reach that point where you're like I can't put this down so I'm dying to pick this back up as soon as I finish filming this I'm going to start reading it again and I'm really looking forward to seeing what happens there's I think there's going to be quite a lot of mystery involved and um, just know already that this is going to be a brilliant read so if you're looking for something with a bit of mystery something a little bit different um and a bit more a lot of what i read has been quite sort of supernatural fantasy whereas this is really down to earth and really real life stuff so highly recommend this one i have no idea how long i've been chatting about books for so apologies and well done if you've made it to the end again as i said if you weren't mentioned it's not because i didn't love your book it's just because i've well i've been chatting for long enough basically these are some of my favorite there are more out there they are all brilliant reads i think i think you'd find it hard to pick up any of these books and dislike them if i'm completely honest if you're looking for books to add to your to be, to be read list then i would highly recommend you have a little read of all of them see what you like see what genre you're into but yeah basically these have been my top 20 i'm saying top 20 makes it sound like they're like i've really no okay so these are 20 of my favorite reads this year there's more of them out there <laughs> um let's hope well for your sake this might be the last time you see and hear from me before next year so happy new year and goodbye 2020